Welcome to Behold the Real Jesus Broadcast, brought to you by the Jesus Christ International Church, 325 South High Street, Longview, Texas, zip code 75601. Write to me, Dennis Beard, Post Office Box 2906, Longview, Texas, zip code 75606. In that doctrine of Christ, Christ first and foremost is the Spirit of God. Most people believe that Christ is a man and is not the Father of glory. They do not understand the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ. And this is a great dilemma for the church in the last days because uh, the Lord will intervene in judgment, for when judgment's in the earth, men will learn righteousness. Therefore, God will do a work of judgment, and it will be a strange work, just as mentioned in Isaiah 28, when the Lord will rise to do His work, His strange work, and bring to pass His act, His strange act. Uh, judgment He'll lay to the line, and righteousness to the plummet. Uh, what? This overflowing scourge has surprised the hypocrite, sitting in church every Sunday, paying tithes of all he possesses, fasting twice in the week, and still does not know the doctrine of Christ. The doctrine of Christ is the foundation for the church. In 451 A.D., in the Chalcedonian definition, we had uh, the doctrine of Christ, or Christology, as was done by the Chalcedonian Synod. That was a council of ministers that were got together, and as they did in uh, the doctrine of Christ, uh, and they said uh, that the Son of God, according to His Godhead, that is, the Spirit of God, was begotten before the world was. Well, how in the world can that be? What they're saying is, is that the Spirit of God, God is a spirit, and those that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. But it literally denies that there's only one Spirit of God. The Lord God is that Spirit. Jesus is that Lord. 2 Corinthians 3.17, the Lord is that Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord there is liberty. God is a Spirit. And that Spirit is the one and only true Spirit, the one and only true God, and there's not another. As we read in the book of Isaiah, according to that prophet, in Isaiah 42, 43, and 44, the Lord God said, I am the Lord. Beside me there is no God. There is no other God beside me. There is no Spirit Junior. There is no Spirit Junior in heaven. There is no Son of God in heaven along with the Father carrying on a conversation. There is only one Spirit of God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, not two, not three, but one. That is uh, the greatest commandment of all as declared by Jesus uh, when the scribe asked him in Mark 12, uh, what is the first commandment of all? What is the dominant commandment of all commandments? Jesus answered Mark 12:29. The greatest commandment of all, the first commandment of all, the dominant commandment of all is here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, not two, not three, not a junior. He is one. One doesn't mean a union in one, but literally one, as there is only one. 
We try to explain away the one. Well, he's one spirit, but there's three persons. There's only one person of God revealed. There is only one person of God in his omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent spirit. There is only one God. There is only one spirit. And in the going out in the Shema of Deuteronomy 6, 4, and Israel's going out and coming in, they would say in the morning sacrifice and evening sacrifice, at the sound of the trumpet, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Jesus literally emphasized that again in Mark 12, 29. The greatest commandment of all is hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one one Lord. One is not three. One is not a trinity. One is not a binitarian. One means one. It's very simple. One is one. How be it through the ages with the Council of Nicaea, 325 AD, when Constantine held a literal synod, their own joining Rome with the Christians at that time, and they came up with a Trinitarian doctrine that was unknown to the original apostles. They never did preach three. They only preached one, Jesus Christ, uh, that he is God, uh, that he is the Father of glory, just as Paul talked of this mystery. It is a mystery of Christ, the mystery of Christ. And that is what we'll be dealing with today on the broadcast, is what is this mystery? What is this foundation of the church? That if we do not embrace this, that we do not believe in this Christ, that there is an antichrist that will deceive many in the last days. It is so close to the truth, but yet fails to hit the mark. It is the greatest delusion and deception of all time. It is uh, against Christ and anti-Christ. Therefore, it behooves us to do our due diligence uh, to know the revelation of Christ. You see, Paul in Colossians 2, verse 1 through 9, talked about uh, this mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ. Now, we know that God is a spirit, and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. But it's a mystery of Christ and of the Father, which is a mystery of God. The mystery of godliness, without controversy, great, is the mystery of godliness. That God himself was manifest in the flesh, 1 Timothy 3.16. Justified in the Spirit, not God Jr., not a second person of the Godhead, God himself was manifest in the flesh, justified in the Spirit, believed on the world, seen of angels, uh, and then received up into glory. Who? God himself. 1 Timothy 3.16. This Spirit is God. God is the Spirit, and that Spirit is omnipresent everywhere. Going to heaven, I'm there. Going to hell, I'm there. Where is the house that you will build me, David? For God is omnipotent. He is almighty. He is omniscient. He is all-knowing. There is only one God, not three, not a pantheon, and not a tritheist, uh, or three in one. God is one. And that holy one of Israel is uh, that he is God. And that is the revealing of Jesus Christ as John declared him in the book of the Revelation of Jesus Christ uh, in Revelation 1.8 that he is Alpha and Omega. He is the beginning and the ending, which is, was, and is to come, the Almighty. The Almighty is the omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent God. Who? Jesus Christ. Well, then how in the world did we come up with three? Well, it seems correct to man's earthly knowledge in his intellectual knowledge, but not according to Christ. And that's what we'll talk about today. In Colossians 2, 
verse 1 through 9, Paul speaks of the full acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ, in whom are hid all treasures of wisdom and knowledge, not in them, in him. You see, let no man deceive you, spoil you through the tradition of men, philosophy, vain philosophy, and the rudiments of this world, and not after Christ, as you have been taught Christ. The problem is that most churches do not teach Christ. They teach the Son of God, but they do not give the revelation of the Son of God. They teach the Father, but they do not give the revelation of the Father. They teach scriptures and the benefits and over 3,000 promises in the Word of God, but they do not preach. Uh, they teach and they establish in the doctrine of Christ from whom all dwells, dwell, uh, blessings flow. See, there's exceedingly great and precious promises given to us whereby we escape the corruption of the world through lust that we might be made partakers of His, not theirs, His divine nature. And that is Christ, Christ in you, the hope of glory. The mystery of God and the Father and of Christ, as Paul declares it in Colossians 2, verse 9. Give us a bottom line. What is it, Paul? All the fullness of the Godhead. When we look up Godhead, we think we should see, oh, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. But it's not. God is a singular spirit. There's not another. Isaiah 42, 43, and Isaiah 44 states, there is no other God. There's no God beside me. There's no God junior beside me. There is no other God that I know not any. Well, there's not a second person of the Godhead up there having a conversation. God said himself that he alone is God. When he created the heaven and the earth, in Isaiah 44, 24, I span the heaven out myself and the earth alone. No, God speaking to the Son or whatever, that he is uh, the one and true, only Spirit of God. The Lord is that Spirit. Who is the Lord? Jesus is the Lord. The Lord is that Spirit, 2 Corinthians 3.17. Jesus is that Spirit. That's the reason while he was in the world, he said, while I'm with you, I'm one of you. And that's where the mystery comes in. And as we touch, teach Christ here, as uh, the Word of God declares in 1 Peter 1, verse 10 and 11, the Old Testament prophets search diligently into the salvation that should come unto us, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ that was in them. Well, wait a minute. Christ hadn't even come into the world yet. Christ hadn't been born yet. Why? Christ is the Spirit of God. He is the Father. It's the mystery of God and the Father and of Christ. That is, Christ, the Spirit of God, is the Father. He is God, and there's not another. He is a one and only God. There in Colossians 2, 9, the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ is that all the fullness of the Godhead, everything the Spirit of God is, was, or ever will be, dwelleth in Christ Jesus bodily. Now bodily, there is only one body, and all of God, all the fullness of God, everything God is from A to Z, Alpha and Omega, the Allah to the Tav, the A to the Z, is in Christ, in whom are hid all treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Well, let's take a good look at Christ, doing our due diligence. You see, that in 1 Peter 1, verse 10 and 11, all the Old Testament prophets prophesied, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ that was in them. That is a capital S. It's the Spirit of God. God is the Spirit. It's the Father. It is the El Shaddai. It's the Elohim. It's the Jehovah, the Elveh. It's the Yahweh. All in, all that in, bodily, one body, Christ. So searching what or what manner the Spirit of Christ that was in them, that is, uh, that Spirit is the Lord Jesus Christ, that Spirit is God Almighty, the Father of glory, that's the mystery, the searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ that was in the Old Testament prophets did testify beforehand of the sufferings of Christ. 
Well, Christ, first and foremost, is the Spirit of God. How bit Christ is going to make himself a body of flesh and blood. It will not be the second person of the Godhead. It will not be Christ Jr. It will, Christ will literally come in a body of flesh as Christ, which is God manifest in flesh. Christ is not only the man. He is the Spirit. How much of the Spirit? All the fullness of the Godhead. Everything that God is, was, or ever will be. Many have erred thinking that Christ is just a man. And this is what Jesus, whenever he asked questions, asked the Pharisees in Matthew 22. They had already tried to trip Jesus up in his words. And they said, is it lawful to pay tribute to Caesar or not? Jesus said, sell me a coin, a penny, whose superscription's on it. They said Caesar's. He said, render to Caesar the things to be Caesar's. Render to God the things to be God. Well, then the Sadducees came up, didn't believe in a resurrection. They didn't believe in angels. They did not believe in a resurrection. They came to Jesus and said, now, it says in the law that they marry a husband and a wife, but the husband dies. And then the woman marries uh, again, the brother to raise up the name, and then he dies. And it says, in the resurrection, whose wife shall she be? For all seven had her to wife. In other words, this woman had married seven different men there of that household. And uh, then in the resurrection, whose wife shall she be? All seven had her to wife. And then Jesus answered the question. You do err, not knowing the power of God, nor the Scriptures. And he goes on to say those that uh, are in the resurrection, uh, neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels. And then Jesus said, I have a question for you. They've been firing questions at Jesus to trip him up in his words, to take him at his own words. Now Jesus said, I have a question for you. Matthew twenty-two forty-two. 42. What think you of Christ? Whose son is he? Now, he didn't say what spirit is he. The Spirit, there is the Spirit of Christ. But he said, whose son is he? They said unto him, the son of David. Well, here's my little stick man. There's a man of flesh and blood. Uh, there's Jesus. There's a body of flesh. And he is, uh, according to the little S-O-N, the son. It's a sonship question, not a capital S-O-N, because a capital S-O-N is the Spirit of God. The little S-O-N, Jesus said, whose son is he? What think you of Christ? Whose son is he? Little S-O-N. In other words, the pedigree, the generation, the genealogy. Well, they said he is the son of David. Well, he is the son of David according to the flesh. They got this part of Christ right. And that's where most church people and the body of Christ know and believe that Christ was a man walked on the face of the earth. What they do not realize, and many do not, but God is revealing it in the last days to those that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches, that Christ, first and foremost, is the Spirit of God. All the fullness of the Godhead. Everything God is and was ever will be, Colossians 2, 9. Literally, the invisible Spirit of God. Christ is that Spirit. The Old Testament prophets searched what matter of time the Spirit of Christ that was in them did testify before him. How did they testify? By the Spirit of Christ that was in them. And that Spirit is a capital S. It is God Almighty that was moving in those prophets. Samuel, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel 14, minor prophets on to Malachi. Well, Jesus, when he asked the question of Christ, to the Pharisees, they said, what think you of Christ? Whose son is he? Well, he's the son of David. Jesus did not say, no, you're wrong. Well, it is the son of David according to the flesh, according to his genealogy, seed of Abraham, the seed of David. But he did not stop there. He said, then how does David in spirit say the Lord? And he quotes Psalm 110, verse 1. Now, this is going to help us in the doctrine of Christ. The Lord, who is Christ? He's the Lord. That is the Lord Jehovah God Almighty. That is Yahweh. That is Jehovah. That is uh, the capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, which is the invisible Spirit of God, uh, the Father of glory, the Lord Jehovah God Almighty. He is uh, the Lord God. 
and God is a spirit. The Lord is that spirit. And David said to the Pharisees that David speaking in Psalm 110, Jesus quoting David in Psalm 110 verse 1 said, The Lord, the capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, that's the Lord Jehovah God Almighty. That is the invisible spirit of God. Going to heaven, I'm there. Going to hell, I'm there. The Lord Jehovah God Almighty said unto my Lord, well, who's David's Lord? That's a capital L and a small case O-R-D. Well, there's only one Lord. As Ephesians 4 says, there's only one Lord. One faith, one baptism, one Lord. Well, it looks like there's two Lords there, but there's not. There's only one Lord. The Lord, Jehovah God Almighty, is the invisible Spirit of God. He's the Lord, Jehovah God Almighty. He is that Spirit. He is the omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent Lord, who is God Almighty. But He's invisible. But then God is going to literally reveal Himself in a body of flesh and blood. Christ is going to make Himself a body of flesh and blood as Christ. Well, Christ is Christ. The Lord is the Lord. This Lord, Jehovah God Almighty, is the invisible Spirit of God. Just as Christ is the invisible Spirit of God that was in the Old Testament prophets. But then he's going to reveal himself in a body of flesh and blood. Who? The Lord God Almighty, the Lord Jehovah God Almighty, is going to reveal himself in a body of flesh and blood. So this capital L, small o r d, is a Hebrew word, Adon, A D O N, which is uh, this man who has all of Christ in him, all the fullness of the Godhead. So what's the difference between the Lord, said unto my Lord, are they the same Lord? Yes. This one's the invisible spirit of God. This one is the visible spirit of God made manifest in a body of flesh and blood. This is the image of the invisible God. The same Lord, capital L-O-R-D, is the same Lord revealed in a body of flesh and blood. Not a different Lord. Not a second person of the Godhead, not a Lord Junior, not a God Junior, but God Himself, Emmanuel, God with us. So who's born in the city of David? Christ, the Lord, is born and takes on a body of flesh and blood as the image of the invisible God, the express image of His singular person, Hebrews 1, verse 1 through 3. That is uh, the brightness of His glory, the express image of His singular person. Where do we get a trinity? Well, in 325 A.D., they had the Chalcedonian definition and set out of Chalced of the uh, I'm sorry, the Nicene Creed. But in 451, they went to the Chalcedonian definition of Christ, which stated that he is, uh, according to his Godhead, the Son of God was begotten of the Father, according to his Godhead, before the world was. That means that this spirit had to make another spirit in heaven. Now we got two spirits. Well, the Nicene Creed declared there was a trinity in 325 A.D. Then we had the Council of Chalcedon, Chalcedonian definition of Christ in 451 A.D. And uh, both are wrong because they are not one. They declare there's a trinity. And the trinity, we have followed this doctrine of the so-called church fathers uh, coming out of Rome for over 1,700 years from the Chalcedonian uh, definition and the Nicene Creed for over 1,700 years in this Trinity doctrine. Well, now God in the last days revealing the true Christ, the true God, as He is, as he is coming back again, and the path of the justice as a shining light, shining more and more into the perfect day, revealing His true identity, and He's going to do it with judgment so that all may know, Jesus said, that I am the Lord, and beside me there is no other God. That's the reason for judgment in the earth in the last days, in the seals, trumpets, and vows, to reveal His identity, the revelation of Jesus Christ. That is the last book in your Bible, regardless of what Bible you carry, King James Version, the New King James Version, uh, the ELT, the ESV, the whatever Bible you carry. It is the revelation of Jesus Christ being only one, 
and that Revelation 1, 8, that he is uh, the Alpha and Omega, the beginning, the ending, the wild sins that is to come, the Almighty. He is the Almighty, the omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent God Almighty. And beside him there is none other. So what is that, what is that revelation of Christ? Well, Jesus stated right there in Matthew twenty two forty two, 42, he said, and asked those Pharisees a question, what think you of Christ? Whose son is he? He's only asking about the generation, the genealogy of Christ, the pedigree. Well, he's the son of David, yes, according to the flesh, but they did not realize that he is the father of glory. So Jesus goes on and says, and how be it, in Psalm 110, verse 1, that David said, The Lord said unto my Lord, Set thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. If David in spirit calls him Lord, that is God Almighty, how is he then his son? Because you had this part right, but you did not get this part right. What is that? The Lord, capital L-O-R-D, is the Lord Jehovah God Almighty who is invisible. The Adon, capital L, small O-R-D, is the body of flesh and blood that the Lord is revealed in, all the fullness of the Godhead, that God giveth not by spirit by measure unto him. He is all the Spirit of God manifest in a body of flesh and blood. That is the image of the invisible God, the expressed image of his singular person, the brightness of his glory. Jesus is and says, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Why? Because it's the Father dwelling, housing permanently. Katakeo is a Greek word. All the fullness of the Godhead dwelleth, houses permanently in Christ Jesus, one body. Not a second person of the Godhead, not another God, not a God junior, but God himself. So Christ is the man that is the image of the invisible God who is Christ, the Father of glory, the mystery of God, and the Father of Christ as you see in Colossians 2, written by Paul, that Scripture 1 through 9, Colossians 2, 1 through 9, revealing the mystery of God and the Father and of Christ, in whom are hid all treasures, wisdom, and knowledge, all the fullness of the Godhead, dwelleth, housing permanently in Christ Jesus bodily. Now let's take a look. Matthew 16, Jesus is going to say, this is the foundation for the church. Christ is that foundation. He starts off by saying, who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Well, people say, well, the Son of Man is that his flesh and blood. And that is where we've missed the revelation of the Son of Man. You see, in John 3.13, Jesus tells us who the Son of Man is. And he says, no man hath ascended up to heaven. But he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. That Son of Man is not a human man or man in a human body, but that man is God himself. That man is, in the supreme sense, uh, that man that came from heaven. Who is that man? Well, the first Adam was made a living soul. The second Adam was made a quickening spirit. The first man, man, Adam, was of the earth, earthy. God took the dust of the ground, formed and breathed into man, after forming, forming him of the dust of the ground, breathed into his nose the breath of life, and he became a living soul. Now, the second Adam made a quickening spirit, spirit. Take a look over that first man of the earth, uh, there, the first man, Adam, was of the earth, earthy. He came from the earth, and from dust thou art, and dust thou shalt return. How did not that second man? The second man is the Lord from heaven. So he was born in the city of David, Christ the Lord, Jehovah God Almighty, revealed in a body of flesh, God with us, Emmanuel. Ah, not God Jr., God himself. And this is the foundation of the church. In Matthew 16, Jesus, who men say that I the Son of Man am, well, the Son of Man is the Spirit of God. It's the kingdom of us. It is uh, the power of God. It is revealed in a body of flesh and blood. The Son of Man is that Spirit. Jesus was not the Son of any earthly man, 
that Son of Man speaks of uh, that literal God that came down from heaven and revealed himself. That Son of Man is not divine flesh, just as Jesus declared in John 3.13, No man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. And Jesus was standing there in shoe leather before them. Then he said, Who do men say that I the Son of Man am? Some say you're Elijah, Jeremiah, one of the other prophets. Then Jesus said, But who do you say that I am? Talking to his disciples. Who do you say I am? Well, I am is I am that I am, that have thus spoken out of the burning bush, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Christ is the Son of the living God. Christ is Christ, and that is Christ, the Spirit revealed in a body of flesh and blood, as Christ, all the fullness of the Godhead in Him. Therefore, the Son... And the Father are one and the self, same spirit, not a different spirit, not a God junior, not a spirit junior, but one and the self, same spirit of God. This is what Jesus stated in John 10, 30. I and my Father are one. We're the self, same spirit of God. Not whom, H-U-N, which is uh, we're in union together. No, it is heis, H-E-I-S, a Greek word meaning one and the self same spirit. Well, then why did Jesus pray to the Father if he is the Father? And that's where we have this mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ. For the Son and the Father are one and the self same spirit. It never called him God the Son. It called him the Son of God. Why the Son of God? Because the of God is the flesh and blood re revealing of the Spirit of God and the office of that Spirit called the Son of God. For the Son of God is the Father revealed. Well, why didn't it say Father? Well, the Father's an invisible Spirit. The Word of God, the Word is Spirit, and the Word is life, invisible. The Holy Ghost is the power office of the Spirit of God, invisible. There's three that bear record in heaven, the Father, Word, and the Holy Ghost. These three are one. That is heist again. One in the self, same spirit, just a different office. Father's the administrative office of the Spirit. He is the Father of all spirits. He's the creator of all spirits. The Word is the expression office of the Spirit of God. Thought, plan, purpose, and will of God. The Holy Ghost is the power office of the Spirit of God. Just as you see in Acts, the first chapter, you shall receive power that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You shall be witnesses to me, both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the most parts of the earth. This is Father, Word, and Holy Ghost, which is Spirit. Well, that's three different offices, the same Spirit of God. But the Son of God is a redemption office of the Spirit. It's a Spirit taken on a body of flesh and blood in order to die for us, for us to take away the sin of the world. It never called Him God the Son. It's the Son of God. Why? Because the Son of God will have a beginning and an ending. Jesus said, the things concerning me have an end. My Father is greater than I. And let's take a look at that. Spirit, Christ is that Spirit that all the Old Testament prophets prophesied by. That's 1 Peter 1, verse 10 and 11. But it's going to be revealed in a body of flesh and blood, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ that was in the Old Testament prophets did testify beforehand of the suffering of Christ. Christ is going to make himself a body of flesh and blood. God is going to be revealed, be revealed in a body of flesh and blood. The Son of God is the Father revealed in a body of flesh and blood. Jesus said, you see me, you've seen the Father. And that is uh, the revelation of Christ. When Jesus Ask, who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Some say you're Elijah, Jeremiah, one of the other prophets. Who do you say that I am? Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. They had both what Peter spoke was that you're both the Father, the Word, the Holy Ghost, all that God is, Jehovah Lord God Almighty, in a body of flesh and blood. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. That is, he had both not just the flesh and lineage of Christ, but Christ is that spirit. There is only one Christ. 
who is a spirit revealed in a body of flesh and blood. And this is a mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ, in whom are hid all treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Christ is not just a body of flesh and blood that's been glorified. Christ, first and foremost, is the Spirit of God, always has been the Spirit of God, and will always be the Spirit of God. Therefore, Jesus told Peter, and Peter said, Thou art the Christ of the Son of the living God. Christ, the Lord Jesus, said unto Peter, Simon Barjona, flesh and blood hath not revealed this unto thee. There is a revelation according to the flesh. And when uh, the Lord talked to Peter, he called him Simon Barjona, his earthly, worldly name. Simon, to hear and understand, Bar Jonah. Bar is Babylonian for son, Jonah. That is a revelation of the world, his worldly name. Simon Bar Jonah, flesh and blood hath not revealed this unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Therefore, he said, ah, Thou art Peter, a piece of the rock. Thou art Peter, Petros, rock. Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And he was given the keys to the kingdom. There is the revelation of the Son of God, who is the invisible Spirit, the Father, the Word, the Holy Ghost, revealed in a body of flesh and blood as the Christ, who is Christ, uh, revealed in a body of flesh and blood as the Christ, and will go back to uh, glorification as Christ. Let me explain. Christ is Christ, not Christ Jr. Christ is Christ. And therefore, in Philippians 2, verse 5 through 10, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God. Why does it say Jesus Christ and other times Christ Jesus? Because we're focusing on the Christ. The fo fo focusing on the Christ is uh, his work, his work as Christ, who will take on a body of flesh and blood as the Christ, which is God manifest in the flesh. That's the mystery of godliness. That is the mystery of God. 1 Timothy 3.16, God himself, Christ, was revealed in a body of flesh and blood as Christ. So Jesus, Philippians 2, 6, who being in the form. Jesus, who being in the form of God. He is God. He's in the form of God. He's spirit. In the form of God is spirit. Thou not Robert to be equal to God. Well, nobody's equal with God except God himself. Not made equal, to be equal with God. And that's the reason why he said it in the form of God, though not robbery, to be equal with God, literally made himself of no reputation. Now that is key. No reputation means that he literally, no reputation, not some, none. And that is a Greek word uh, in the kano, kenosis, K-E-N-O-O, -O, and then literally makes himself of no reputation, is not no deity, but no reputation that is uh, emptied out. A laying aside of his glory. Why? Because here's your mystery. Because Christ, who is spirit, cannot die, but the Old Testament prophets searching what or what manner time the spirit of Christ, the God Almighty, the Holy Ghost God, the Spirit of God that was in them did testify beforehand of the sufferings of Christ. This man right here is going to suffer. Who is it? He's Christ revealed in a body of flesh and blood. Searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ that was in the Old Testament prophets testified beforehand of the sufferings of Christ. Again, that's 1 Peter 1, verse 10 and 11, and the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. Most of the Protestant world believes that there is a trinity simply based upon the Chalcedonian and the Council of Nicaea there as Roman Catholic synods uh, back in 325 A.D. and 451 A.D. And we have believed this for the truth. We haven't challenged it. And it's been taught from generation to generation. And now, 1,700 years later after 325 D, now we're, God's beginning to move and show that 
the coming of the Lord is, is nigh, and he's going to reveal himself, just as he said in the book of the Revelation, the revelation of Jesus Christ that God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass, sent and signified it by his angel unto John, and that he is, according to Roman, uh, Revelation 1.8, the eternal God. He's Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, which was, is, and is to come, the Almighty. Who? Jesus. He is that God. And that whole revelation of Jesus Christ is, at Revelation 22, that he's both the root, the father of, and the offspring, son of David. He's the father of David because he is the Spirit of God that created David. He is that Christ. He is the root of David, the father of David. And he's the offspring of David. He's both the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning stars. Jesus, as the Son of God, the Son of the Father's one and the self-same Spirit, the of God is revealed in a body of flesh and blood. Not God the Son, because that have divine flesh, which is oxymoron. That which is flesh is flesh, and that which is spirit is spirit. Why would God take on a form of a servant? Take on the form of a servant made in the likeness of men, Philippians 2, 7, 8. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself to the death, the death of the cross. Why? Because Adam, by one man's disobedience, sin came to the world, and death by sin. Therefore, by one man shall my servant make many righteous. God can't die. He's spirit. Can't be tempted because he tempteth no man. But he literally will make his own body of flesh and blood in order to die for the sin of the world. Jesus, being in the form of God, thought it not wrong to be equal with God, made himself of no reputation, laid aside his glory, just as the Old Testament high priest on the Day of Atonement laid aside his garments of glory and beauty, took upon the linen uh, the linen garments going within the veil. Jesus did the same thing. Uh, he laid aside his glory, come under his own law, and that's how God sent forth his Son. How? Galatians 4, verse 4. There's nowhere in the Scripture it said that the Father said unto the Son, go down and die for the sin of the world. Nowhere. How be it? It said God did send forth his Son. How did he send him forth? Galatians 4, verse 4. In the fullness of time, God sent forth his Son. How? Made of a woman. The Son of God is the Spirit or the Father revealed in a body of flesh and blood. How did he send it? He took on a body of flesh and blood. So in the fullness of time, God sent forth his Son made of a woman, made in under the law. That law was given that sin might appear exceedingly sinful. And notice that it divided as a wall of partition the Spirit of God from all mankind, and that's a wall of partition that literally separated God from all his creation. What does God do? He gives the law, but the law was not life, but administration of death. For by the works of the law, no flesh should be saved. But only without the shedding of blood. Why did God, uh, why did the Lord Jesus have to literally fulfill this law? Because the law required uh, the shedding of blood uh, and had to be fulfilled in all points because the law required uh, the shedding of blood in death. Therefore, in what the law could not do, in that it was weak in the flesh, it did make sin appear exceedingly sinful that mankind knew that all of sin comes short of the glory of God because of the law that was given. But the, by the works of the law, no flesh should be saved. So what the law could not do in that it was weak in the flesh, in the motions of sin, in the human, the humanity and under sin, death having dominion over mankind all their lifetime. God, in there, sending forth his Son, what the law could not do in that it was weak in the flesh, God is sending forth his Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, not sinless flesh, in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. Now let's take a look at Christ. Jesus, literally, as he is in the world, John 14, he said, you believe in God, believe also on me, and not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also on me, my Father's house, and many mansions. What are you saying? I'm saying Christ is the Spirit of God. He is the Father of glory, manifested in a body of flesh and blood as the Son of God. Son of God has two components. One, he is the Spirit of God without measure. Two, in a body of flesh and blood. Not a separate person of the Godhead, not another person, 
Not God Jr., but God Himself revealed. The Lord is the invisible Spirit of God, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, said unto my Lord, that Lord is the revealed God. It is the image of the invisible God walking among us. There's only one Lord there, but it looks like there's two, but it's not. This one's invisible. This one's manifest. Same Lord, the same Spirit, the same Jehovah God Almighty, the Lord of glory. Therefore, Jesus as he said, you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. Why is he praying to the Father? Because he has to have a man. By one man's disobedience, sin came to the world. Therefore, by one man shall my servant make many righteous. God looked for a man. He was amazed he could find none. Therefore, he said, my own arm, my arm brought salvation to myself. Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians 5 said, God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself. That is, Jesus is that Father of glory revealed in a body of flesh and blood. What do you call that? Father revealed? You know, uh, the show of the Father. Father showed himself. No, you call it the Son of God. That's the office of the Spirit that has the Father revealed. It's the of God. What? The Son is the same Spirit of the Father revealed in a body of flesh and blood. No better title to give it in the office of the Spirit of God than the Son of God. Who is the Father revealed in a body of flesh and blood? Just as Jesus said, you believe in God, believe also in me. Why? Because I have all of my Father dwelling in me. But I'm working as a man and under the law because there's a mental wall of partition parting God from man, that law of ordinances that were contrary as a mental wall of partition between God and man in Ephesians 2. So if Jesus said, you believe in God, believe also in me and my Father's house and many mansions. Why is he praying to the Father? Because he's made himself of no reputation. Come under his own law. You'll find that, that he, would, he will have to keep that law. And that high priest takes his office at age 30. You will see that in Numbers 4 of the Levitical priesthood that they take their office at age 30 and they retire at age 50. Numbers 4.3. The high priest, not just a regular priesthood, the high priest, takes his office at age 30, retires at age 50. Therefore, Jesus will start his ministry. He will fulfill the law under Moses, beginning his ministry at age 30. He'll fulfill all the prophets, uh, and David took his uh, kingship as, a, as uh, the king over Israel at age 30. We find uh, Ezekiel in the 30th year of Ezekiel, son of Buzi. He's going to take his office as a high priest. 30 is the price of blood. 30 is the number of the man child. 30th year of Ezekiel. Joseph was 30 years old, began to reign uh, under Pharaoh in Egypt. Uh, we find that 30 pieces of silver is the price of blood. Jesus starts his ministry at around the age of 30. Why? Because he's going to fulfill his own law. He's not going to work his spirit over here because a man lost it. Only a man can redeem it back. He's emptied out of glory to come under his own law. God in Christ, Emmanuel, God with us, but working as a man to bring us all back to God, God working salvation in and of himself alone. Jesus said, you believe in God, believe also in me. Why? Because he's now under his own law, and this man has his own will as one of us. And as we see in the Garden of Gethsemane, Father, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. And God is manifest and is working in and through that body of flesh and blood. Who is he? You've seen me, you've seen the Father, Jesus said. All the fullness of Godhead is in him. When you see that, Jesus said, my Father's house, many mentioned, we're not so over to told you. I've got to prepare a place for you, not for me. I'm God, always has been God. I've added to myself the form of a servant. I'm in the form of God, but I added myself a form of a servant so I can save you, so I can redeem you, justify you, sanctify you, and ultimately glorify you to be, bring many sons unto glory. What does he do? He takes on another form, comes under his own law. He's emptied out of glory over here of no reputation, and he literally works as a man, and he prays to that spirit uh, as he literally is progressively glorifying his own human God in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. Not another God, not a second person of the Godhead. 
that God himself makes himself of no reputation and literally works as a man and glorifies his own human from glory to glory. That's the reason why Jesus said, my father's greater than I. Somebody said, well, he's co-equal. No, he's not. Jesus said, my father's greater than I. Jesus being in the form of God, they're not robbery to be equal with God. But as a man, he said, my father's greater than I. He's talking his spirit over here. Here, he's talking in his flesh, the flesh that he is, emptied out of glory, a two work salvation in and of himself alone as a man. And that's what throws most people. That's where they get confused and say, well, then how can Jesus be the Father if he's praying to the Father? Not understanding that the God himself has added to himself another form of a man to work salvation in and of himself as God's own arm, arm of flesh, bringing salvation into himself. It's God. Not God Jr., God himself. Well, we see that Jesus, our Father's greater than he said, you believe in God, believe also in me. The Father's house of many mansions. If we're not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you, not for me. He's always been God. I'm trying to redeem you. I'm going to redeem you through death. I'm going to fulfill this law, the prophets and the Psalms, and I'm going to bring you back to me. Then I prepare a place for you, not for him, for us. What he walked to in us or to us word uh, when he set him in his own right hand in the heavenly places. So Jesus said, you, I go to prepare a place for you, that where I am, there you may be also, and whether I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas saith to him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest. Well, is it this Lord or this Lord? This Lord is the invisible spirit revealed in a body of flesh and blood. Is that Lord, not just a man, just like Jesus told the Pharisees in Matthew twenty-two forty-two, When Jesus said, if the Lord said unto my Lord, set thou in my right hand, and make that into thy footstool, if David calls him Lord, Jehovah God Almighty, how is he then his son? And no man was able to answer him, neither durst any man ask Jesus any more questions. It shut their mouths, and they do not, most do not understand it today. Do we have to be uh, in this revelation of Jesus? Do we have to have this doctrine of Christ? Well, Second John 9 says, if any man, if any man is not in that doctrine of Christ, if any man does not have that doctrine of Christ and that disobedience, he is not of God. If any man transgresseth in the doctrine of Christ, 2 John 9, whosoever transgresseth in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. That's that simple. This is the foundation of the church. We miss this here, neighbor. We miss it all. That's why the devil will attack this revelation of Christ with an antichrist. God, Jr., second person of the Godhead, Trinity, whatever, to where you will not give him the glory due unto him, God, your Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, and him alone. For every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord. He's the Christ that took on a body of flesh and blood as Christ, died for you, and went back glorified with Christ, back to his former former glory that he put off. You see, he's glorifying his own human. You'll find it in Acts 2.36. Let all the house of Israel know surely that same Jesus whom you crucified, God hath made him both Lord and Christ. Glorified with God's own self. Jesus in the garden said, uh, as he's praying, Father, glorify thou me with the glory I had with you before the world was. Before I made to put that glory off and made myself of no reputation to take on the form of a servant, I want all that glory back. Jesus comes out of the tomb, resurrected, and literally says, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. That did not leave the Father powerless. He's glorified with the Father's own self. And that is righteousness in John 16 that literally reproved the world of righteousness because I came from the Father, proceeded from him, I went back to him, not beside him, to him. No more. You ask in my name, and I'll say no more, I'll pray the Father for you. Somebody said, well, yeah, that's Jesus sitting up there in heaven mediating for us. No. John 16, he said, you ask in my name, I'll no more pray the Father for you. Why? Because all the Father's given is given unto me. I'm set down with the Father in his throne. I'm it. You're looking at him. Now God's revealed, literally, that man, Jesus, is made a quickening spirit. 
1 Corinthians 15, 45. But he prepared a place for us in the days of his flesh. Jesus, in the days of his flesh. Take a look here. As he says, Father, why is he praying to the Father? Well, even though he is a spirit, because he made himself a no reputation to be in our stead for us. He's one of us. And that's the reason he said, well, he's one of us. He said, I'll pray the Father for you, that he'll send you another comforter, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth he. He's invisible. But you know him. How did they know? How did they know the Father? For you know him, for he dwelleth with you. Jesus, I'm dwelling with you, men, right now. And I shall be in you. I shall be in you. Who? The Father of glory. The Holy Ghost. Christ. The Father. The mystery of God and the Father of Christ will be in you. Somebody said, well, that's not the Father. Oh, yes, it is. Jesus said in Matthew over there, I said, they're going to deliver you up to kings and magistrates. Take you no thought what you shall say or speak, for it's not you. I'll give you a mouth that they cannot gainsay nor resist. Why? Because uh, it's not you that speak it, but the Spirit of your Father that is in you, Christ in you. That is Jesus Christ in you. How somebody says that Jesus Christ in you, the Son of God in you? Of course it is. It's one and the self, same Spirit, not a different Spirit. Take a look at Galatians 4, 6. That God has set forth a spirit. The spirit what? The spirit of the Father, the spirit of the Son. It's the same spirit of the Holy Ghost. It's one and the same spirit. God has sent forth the spirit of his Son into our hearts whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Why? Because the spirit of the Son, the spirit of the Father is not another spirit. It's one and the self same spirit. Here's what I want you to see. Jesus is glorifying his own human back to himself for our sakes. Therefore, Jesus... As he literally says, Father, glorify me with thine own self, John 17, 5. Uh, when in the days of his flesh, he goes up progressively, glorifying his own human, back to God, and he sets a place in heavenly places where he sits, S-I-T. That's for us. We're made to sit together. We are made to sit together in heavenly places uh, in Christ Jesus. Four and 20 seats in heaven. Four and 20 elders, seats in heaven. Well, take a look. In Revelation 3, 21, Jesus said to him that overcometh, will I grant to sit, sit, S-I-T, with me in my throne. Well, where'd you go, Jesus? Even as I overcame and am set, S-E-T, settled, sit down with my Father in his throne. You've seen Jesus, you've seen the Father. Neighbor is not another one. He is the only true God. Visit us. Take, a, take advantage of the offer. God is moving people into more truth now than ever. Nations are coming into this great, wonderful truth. The only true God in eternal life. Uh, this is Brother Dennis Beard saying, Behold the real Jesus. Thank you.